Um, some thoughts I'm going to mention on Filippo Colombo. I've been here uh, since last May, and uh, I am uh, the JHA coordinator, uh, Justice and Home Affairs coordinator, a permanent uh, representation of Italy. So I have been involved since last May uh, in uh, all the issue, of course, of migration, and especially in migration in the Mediterranean. Of course, you all know, you all have in mind what happened in October, on, October, on the 3rd of October, I, sorry, I think, yes, of October uh, 2013, when a, uh, when a boat with more than 500 migrants on board capsized, and uh, killing most of them after a fire broke. This was the, let's say, the spectacular, uh, let's say, the, the most spectacular and most tragic accident in which, uh, which caused the most death in a single accident. But we should not uh, forget that many, many others died in the, not only in the previous month, but in the previous days. I mean, only, only, only some days before we had uh, to. We had uh, the 13 people had died, and so the, there had been all over the summer and uh, also in the years before a, a huge number of people who died at sea because of the conditions in which they are they take the sea, and because of course it is not possible, simply not possible, to uh, to, to 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 have a constant surveillance of all the Mediterranean. After that, there was a big outpour, how can I say, of, uh, of emotion. People were very worried about what, what was happening in the Mediterranean. Uh, Commissioner Malmström of the European Commission, uh, the European Commissioner Malmström proposed a, a SAR search and rescue operation, which would go from Cyprus to Gibraltar. Of course, all of these issues have been then, uh, let's say, discussed into a framework which is called the Task Force of the Mediterranean which worked in the second, in the last part of last year, had a couple of meetings, consultations, and everything went, uh, the result of all of this was a communication by the Commission. But first, so this is, this, this have been the last steps to show how uh, the, how the, how this issue is at the center of attention in the European Union. But first of all, let me say, let me say a couple of words on this, on this phenomenon. Uh, when we're talking about uh, the phenomenon, yes, it is true that there is an element of irregular migration, but we have to realize that more and more people who are on board of those boats are people who could, who can, uh, who, are, uh, who could apply for asylum. This, we have seen a shift in that in the last years. Uh, some years ago, uh, we, had, we always had a majority of people who were potential asylum seekers, but before there were the, 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 the component of uh, economic migrants was, was much higher. Now, most of the people who are on board could potentially ask for asylum. So we cannot even talk about any, anymore about irregular migration. We have to talk about migration flows in the Mediterranean, uh, which, are, which seem to be more and more a, uh, some kind of a, of a permanent phenomenon. Uh, you rightly said that most of the people who enter into Europe enter through legal means, or they enter also through the land frontier. But there is, but you, but what happens in the maritime frontier is that there are many, many more risks involved into that route. Risks, of course, first of all, for the lives of migrants because they really risk their lives. While in the land frontier, the most that they risk is being caught if they don't do something really foolish. And, uh, and it's also, let me say, it has also an element of, uh, of danger and of, big, uh, and of big mobilization of resources for those who are controlling that frontier, which is Italy, of course, the European, U the European Union, Frontex through Italy, and now our new operation Mare Nostra. Mare Nostrum, I don't know if you are aware, was launched, was an operation, was uh, an operation of, the, of our Navy, which was launched after this tragedy, on the 18th of October 2013. And from October until mid-March, so these are the, we, they rescued more than 11,000 persons. In a moment in which, in general, people should not even be tra traveling because it's the winter season. 
And during the winter season, in general, people don't take the sea because it's, it's rough, more rough, it's more dangerous. But of course, people, first of all, we had a very mild winter. Second of all, people are now more and more determined to enter into uh, the European Union by all means. This has multiple causes. Uh, the first cause that we, that we see is, of course, the situation in Libya. The situation in Libya is unfortunately, uh, Libya unfortunately did not yet come out of, uh, still is facing the consequences of the civil war of three years ago. So still has a very fragile state, very, uh, uh, very, very fragmented, doesn't control all of the state, and the um, and uh, the, uh, the, the the smuggling of people of migrants is a huge source of revenue in an economy in which basically all other economic activity has more or less, if not stopped, certainly has been very much diminished. So there is a huge interest, also local interest, into into <coughs> into into pushing people to take the sea, and people take the sea also because they don't have work anymore there, and the situation there is frankly speaking quite difficult. This is, so what we are seeing now, I mean, now I'm just, I will just take my paper so I, won't, I will give you more accurate figures. Just to give you an idea, uh, in the winter, so from January to March of last year, more or less 140 migrants came. This year it was more than 5,000 people rescued by Madden Austin. So we are facing a big uh, we are going to face, in the latter part of the year, I fear, a big, big, big pressure. This, of course, is a big problem for a country in the first line like Italy. Our first priority, whatever you might say, our first priority has to be the saving of human lives. This is something that, believe it or not, can be controversial. Why? Because <coughs> what we are being said is you are encouraging people to take the sea because they know that you are going to rescue them. So even people who have some fear who will not take the sea now are taking the sea because of you. But on the other side, if we stop this operation, people will continue coming. I mean, we know that. We know that from experience. We know that from the previous years. So in the moment we stop this operation, sooner or later, there will be some tragedy. Sooner or later, there will be some tragedy. There is not even the, the absolute guarantee that our operation is saving everybody. I mean, it's, it's, it's very difficult, but we are putting into this operation many resources. So, of course, the problem is that this is not the solution to the problem. This is a tampon, you know. It's a, somehow a, a way to try to to at least avoid the most serious consequences of this phenomenon, which is the loss of life at sea. But of course, this is not the solution. We know that. The solution is to try to stop these smuggling routes. But this is not easy. This is not easy because you have to face the fact, first of all, that there are people who are quite desperate and who will go to any length to come to Europe. So they will do whatever they have to do to come to Europe. So we can make regional protection programs, we can do many things at the European Union level, but I think that the phenomenon, this is me speaking, I'm not, I'm not saying necessarily this is the view of the Italian government, but I think that people will still uh, come. And the second thing is that while we have some of the countries in the, south of the, in the southern shore of the Mediterranean who can be reliable partners in this moment, there is Libya, which cannot be considered as such, not because Libyans are not reliable, but just because, unfortunately, their state is in, in this situation. So in the longer term, of course, the, the, uh, the solution or else the, the way to ease at least a little bit this phenomenon will be international cooperation, so partnership agreements with the, with the southern shore, uh, shore of the Mediterranean. We have just signed uh, a partnership declaration with, uh, with Tunisia. Hopefully, with Tunisia, I think we can work. Uh, Spain is working well with Morocco and also with Mauritania. So they are able somehow to stop the, 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 the flow from, from their side. But of course, for us, it's much more difficult.
because of the situation we, have, we are facing in front of us. So, uh, all of this to tell you that search and rescue is, uh, we, I, th I mean, I cannot speak for my government, uh, for, my, for my authorities who maybe in a couple of weeks will change their mind, but I don't think they will. Uh, I think that, that in this moment, as Italy, we cannot accept to have people dying on our shores. So we have to do the utmost to avoid that. On the other side, we know that we might be criticized for that because we will, we will be said, as I told you before, that we are attracting people. Uh, regarding Frontex, so what could be done also at the European level? Besides the partnership with third countries, regional protection programs, uh, resettlements, trying to create more uh, more avenues of legal entry in the European Union for potential asylum seekers to avoid that they go through the sea. But of course, this has a lot of resistance. This has a lot of resistance, especially from the countries who are more likely to then be asked for asylum. Uh, so, I mean, uh, which I guess is also comprehensible, but this, this I think, are some of the things that should be done. On Frontex, uh, you know how Frontex operates in the Mediterranean. They have some missions, two missions in the central Mediterranean, one in the eastern Mediterranean. They are, uh, they are based on the voluntary uh, contributions of the member states. Let's say that until now member states have been, uh, I wouldn't say, have been a little bit reluctant to, to, to participate. Uh, they have not maybe done our, their utmost, to be honest. Maybe something more could be done. I mean, one of the Frontex operation, uh, I remember there are five Italian ships, one Romanian ship, one Italian plane, and one Luxembourgese plane. So basically it's an Italian operation with some help, somehow. And this is a little bit what is going on with this, now a little bit with this Frontex operation. We hope, we hope that part of the problem was that the rules of engagement of the Frontex operations were not very clear. And that, for example, uh, some of the particip potential participants feared the consequences of, you know, taking people on board and then not knowing where to disembark them, something like that. Mm -hmm. So now we have new <coughs> guidelines for Frontex. They have been approved. So now, hopefully, this will encourage more and more uh, member states to participate in the Frontex operation. Because Frontex, oper Frontex is there for control, it is not there for search and rescue, but it is quite obvious that in an emergency situation like the one that we're facing in the central Mediterranean, this would also could also help to, 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 uh, to, 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 save, to, save human, uh, to save human lives. So, uh, in brief, this is, and then of course the last issue that I would like to, to, to mention, which is not strictly related to, to search and rescue, in, in, to search and rescue, but, but it is important. What happens to these people when, when, they are, when, when they are disembarked? So, of course, we are trying to do our utmost as Italy to, to give them uh, a, good, uh, a good treatment. But when you have thousands and thousands of people, th more than thousand people arriving in one day, it is some, sometimes difficult because many times they arrive in the little island of Lampedusa. From there you have to transfer them on the, on the, on the continent. We have some structures. Uh, we have some structures, but they are always full. Uh, then there is also the other issue that maybe it's not completely efficient, but we think might be the right thing to do, is that also when we grant asylum to people, uh, we don't kick them out of the centers. Uh, and we, kick, we, we, we try to accompany them to, to enter into, the, into, 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 our, into our society. And so we give them the possibility to remain a little bit longer in the centers. And so the centers are clogged. So, but, you know, it's a little bit of a catch-22 uh, uh, issue because on the one side, if you're trying to help them, on the other side, then you might have some difficulties with new asylum seekers. So we are trying to do, to do our most. Now we are in, now we are in, in, in contact also with the, with the European Commission in order to see what can be done, what can be done, what can be improved. We have a national, we are basically trying, putting together a national plan somehow. Uh, let's call it national plan. I mean, it's, a, it's a, let's say a strategy in order to reinforce our, our, our capacities also because we know that, that, that they will need reinforcement. 
of course this is very costly in a moment of uh, in a moment of uh, of, uh, of financial difficulties for all the, all of the countries of the European Union especially for the, those in the southern shore this is costly so uh, we had uh, that is why we had in the we had also uh, in the in the negotiation power going to Dublin 3 to the to the last uh, recast of the Dublin uh, of the Dublin regulation, we had tried to, to see if there could be some form of burden sharing, but this, of course, has not, didn't pass. I mean, this didn't pass. Uh, uh, we, I think that, uh, that in this moment, uh, uh, the, the, the focus uh, is more on responsibility than on uh, solidarity. And it's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's fair enough. I mean, fair enough. But obviously, we have somehow, in this moment, a disproportionate pressure on our country due to this peculiar situation, which is our geographical situation, that's all.